What's up, Coffee Families? Again, Love Coffee Canine Services here. And today I'm going to tell you all about Connie Corsos. My perspective is going to be both from um, a, wouldn't necessarily call myself an enthusiast, but um, I love like the creation of the breed and all that type of stuff. So a lot of research based and then um, I'm digging into different pedigrees, different breeds, how things were founded and where everything originated from. Um, and then also from a training perspective, because I put my hands on a lot of courses, I train a lot of courses, I deal with a lot of courses. So, crazies! Why do you ask me crazy? So this is Shango, he's about maybe 15 months or so. Um, he's an American version of Corso. Um, so, we'll get started there. I don't want to turn in. But everybody always hears the Roman war dog and all of this, that, and the third. Um, so you have two different variations. You have the Italian version, then you have the American version. I know that one of these dogs are mine. These are dogs that I've already trained and I've actually, um, they've been boarding with me for a week. Um, Aziza, over here, the gray one, or blue, in the, uh, uh, blue, in the kind of course of standard, um, she would be considered a blue. Uh, she is an Italian line of the dog. And Shango, this black one, <laughs> this big black masterpiece, is an American version of the dog. Um, so, size wise, Aziz is a female, Shango is a male. American lines, typically anything when Americans get their hands on them, you'll see them typically go up in size. American thing, they always think of any dog, anything. Dog related, typically they think bigger is better. So the Corso is an identified as an, as an official breed. They have a standard and all that type of stuff. But you see a lot of different variations. Hence why I went Italian line versus American line. Uh, depending on which line you have or where it's focused at, um, those lines originated from and all that type of stuff is going to determine. Uh, it's going to determine the one quality of dog, not necessarily the quality of dog, but the size of the dog and the dogs that will grow into it. The Corso as a breed in general is more of a, I like to describe it more as a type of dog. It's more of a cocktail. Um, but in each cocktail, the Italian cocktail and the American cocktail, both of them are considered Neapolitan Master Crosses. Hey, 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 hey. Get away from the camera. Don't we'll stop trying to eat stuff all the time. Come here. But, so, we can kind of go into what to expect from Corsos. Life expectancy, 10 to 12 years. Typically, the bigger the dog, the shorter the lifespan. That's typically how it looks for dogs and stuff in general. Think of a great Dane. Most great Danes live maybe seven years. Um, tops, big dogs. Size-wise, I'm 5'10", maybe 100, about 190 pounds or so. Shango, come. Shango is... Standing at <laughs> how tall he is compared to me. Chango is about 130, 140 pounds or so, and he is still growing. Uh, mentally, Corsos mature very slowly. With typically, the, you know, the masses in general, they mature, mature a little bit slower than, say, a, a herder would. Hey, 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 hey. Get away from camera. <coughs> so, typically, with, yeah, with, they mature a lot slower than herders would. Males in particular mature a lot slower than females. Um, this is two and a half years old. Uh, Shango is 15 months. Shango still thinks he's six months sometimes. But oh, all in all, he's a pretty good dog. Uh, so let's go to feeding. Feeding, everybody thinks these dogs eat nine, ten cups a day or whatever, 140 pound a day. Dog, Shango eats anywhere from three to four cups a day. Aziza, two and a half to three. Typically, massives don't eat as much as you would want to feed them, um, per se, because they don't burn off the food as much. Um, just anatomy, just how, how they are. Because typically, massives are cow potatoes. So in the house, typically, they're cow potatoes, unless there's something going on. So they have a off switch. It's, it's, it's a very big thing. So everybody else gets it for, so another thing people get these dogs for is protection training protective dog, they want a guard dog, they want this, they want that. If you're going to get protection training, 
or if you're going to get a dog for a Corso for protection, understand that they are a very powerful dog and that you need prey drive. Prey drive, prey drive, prey drive, prey drive, prey drive. Prey drive. Just because you see champions on the dog's pedigree, don't let a breeder say that this dog would naturally do it or anything like that. Has this dog been tested? Uh, do you know if these dogs, have any dogs in their pedigree been tested? Has any of these dogs competed in any dog sports or, or whatever it may be? Uh, how do you know this dog will truly protect you? Don't fall for the, well, I have somebody come by and it's the first dog that barks, blah, blah, blah. You don't want to react to the dog because that's not a dog that is going to save you in your family if something truly happens. You want a dog that is confident, you want a dog that has prey drive. If you have prey drive, you can teach the dog different things that paint different pictures in a confident drive. Uh, prey drive is a confidence building drive. So you want to teach as much as you can in prey. Um, this, this is how law enforcement dogs are trained, military dogs are trained and all of this type of stuff. Um, you want to teach them and prey so then when you sprinkle in a little defense, because defense is out of place for period, regardless because of you and me, where we're defending ourselves, or say if somebody pulls a gun out of, and we decide, we hey, we need to stand up, we need to defend ourselves, guess what? It's coming out of a fair uh, a place of fear. It's that fight or flight. That's what's going to, that's what's going to kick, kick in, fight. Well, you have fight, flight, or freeze. Rarely do dogs freeze. They're going to get you out of this fight or flight. <laughs> but want a dog every dog is not going to do it don't think just because you're getting the dog and you're getting the breed oh it's going to protect you this and the third most dogs and most breeds that they say will actually protect you and stuff 95 percent of dogs would not naturally protect you at all they don't they don't have the know-how they don't have the confidence to do it they'll whiff it they'll whiff it and then if they do bite they're going to nip you they're not going to commit um, as if a fully trained dog, but you paint pictures and all that type of stuff and show them different scenarios, how to act, when to act. And what you doing, buddy? Huh? You stinky. You need a bath. <laughs> how to act. Um, and protection training actually shows them how to act. Um, so another thing. So we're talking about protection training. You need training. You need to socialize these dogs, even if you're getting them for protection. That's what everybody gets them for. I want them to guard me this and third. You need to socialize these dogs. You need to over-socialize these dogs because when they get older, they naturally begin to fade away from like outsiders and they draw more into their, their family. So who's viewed into that circle? That's who they love. That's who they'll protect. That's who they'll be big babies for, want to roll around and all that type of stuff. You see the goofy, crazy side, outsider cubs. They'll do the little huff. They'll look like, who are you? They're going to always be watching them. So in order to not to make the best out of the situation because the dogs and stuff like that, you're raising up a dog. You figure out what purpose you're getting the dog for, and then you're gonna raise it up and do all the steps and stuff accordingly to make sure that dog turns out to be, or increase your chances the most to see, make that dog be what you want it to be. Um, so you're going to socialize the dog. Make sure the dog is social. Um, Aziza, Aziza, come here. I said Aziza, I didn't say something. This is actually a uh, protection train all the way out. She's actually pregnant right now. Um, so she is pregnant. Um, well, I think they don't confirm it until next week. Here you go. Come on. You getting hot, girly? <laughs> I know, I'm about done. So, um, I knew you was going to do it. <laughs> so, uh, Ziza is potential trained all the way out, uh, and she will 100% will bite somebody. She's already been tested and all that type of stuff. She will bite somebody in real life, with or without equipment. Equipment does not matter. Don't jump on me again, man. Yeah, I know you. That's her big way of giving you a hug and all that type of stuff. She wants to play. I thought she was hot, but no, she wants to play. I'm actually taking them on a walk in a few after I finish this video. But. Um, she's social, she can meet people, I can have people around, I had people over yesterday, um, we, we, uh, cooked on the grill and all that type of stuff, so we had people over and everything, she was out and about, she was fine, um, nice and friendly, uh, initially she looks at them, evaluates them, see if they're good, now she can be out and about, she loves everybody, she's cool, until I give her that word, I want that clarity, um, I always say with protection training, you want a dog that's socially aggressive, so it can be out and about, personal, before a personal protection dog. You need a dog to be able to be out and about and to be able to 
uh, be able to function like a normal dog would out in public, but at a higher level. So obedience, uh, they're not being reactive, they're not acting crazy, they're not doing any of that. Um, absolutely need your obedience. So I can do a whole other video on all of that type of stuff, protection training and everything, and abuse and all of that. But get back to the obedience because these dogs are going to be big, they're going to be strong, they're going to be powerful. So also with the socialization piece is desensitizing these dogs. So grooming, you have to think about this, you're going to have to give these dogs baths, you're going to have to clip their nails. Oh, man, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up, what's up. So you got to think about all that maintenance. You don't want to take a dog, a uh, one-and-a-half-year-old dog that's never been groomed, never got his nails clipped or anything, and go put that dog out um, or give that to a groomer, and then he end up biting, he and his kids are biting them or they end up biting them because they're like, they're scared. They're like, okay, oh, man, they're touching my nails. I don't know what's going on. So you need to get that dog used to being touched all over. Um... You need to get the dog used to being touched all over with the tail, the ears, the head, up under it, grabbing the feet, just getting used to being touched and being okay with it. Um, so you have to do that. Other than that, understand that this dog is a, a, a very powerful dog. It's not for the novice owner. And remember, these dogs are big, but their minds aren't where their bodies are at that particular age. So... If a normal dog or a herder or something like that was six months old, think of, so a nine to ten month old Corso would be at the age range or the mental capacity of a six month old herder at that particular time. Now when they mention, when they when they mature and stuff, they're, you know, their mind is developed and everything, but they just mature a lot slower um, mentally as well as physically. So keep them light, keep them lean, um, allow them to grow, allow them to develop without a lot of stress, a lot of tension on their hips and joints and stuff, because you do have to worry about hips and joints um, as well. So you want healthy hips, you want healthy joints. Big dog, they don't need to be jumping on things, they don't need to be climbing on things. Um, if they're getting in the car, lift them up. <laughs> you're putting them in the back of your truck, lift them up. Um, you're gonna be doing that basically until the growth plates get ready to close, um, because you don't want them to jump down and they end up getting hip displayed and now you got a dog that's walking around like this. You don't want that. <laughs> oh, what's wrong with your corso? Oh, he got bad hips. Is at the third, and then you're going back to your breeder. So your breeder dog had bad hips, and actually it didn't. It was a environmental issue that you caused because you didn't want to let the dog get it out the creek. Or you can get cramps. Um, now you're not cramping in and out the car, or whatever it may be. So, other than that, these dogs can be. Um, they love pleasing their they, they love like pleasing their owners, especially if you make training and stuff fun. Um, they learn pretty fast, uh, but they can be very sensitive um, as well too, depending on the lines, depending on how the dog is bred. Aziza has very high pain tolerance. Uh, she doesn't care about anything. Um, we do protection. She's she's doing her protection work in a prime collar, fully cool. <laughs> doesn't care. Um, but Aziza has very high brain tolerance, does, does not care about that. Dongo, on the other hand, uh, flat book of collar, prong collar, he just, it's just power steer with him. Uh, he's very easy to handle. Come here, Aziza. Z, 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 Come here, ZZ monster. Man, you are getting big, girl. I think you are precious. I think you are. <laughs> Again, she hasn't been, her pregnancy hasn't been confirmed yet. I think she gets confirmed. She's able to be confirmed next week, if I'm not mistaken. I believe that's what her owners told me. But other than that, um, just pay attention to the little things. They're going to be, they're going to seem a lot bigger, and you're going to want them to do a lot more um, and hold them accountable for a lot more things other than uh, because of their size. Remember, size does not mean maturity. Size is mean size. They grow fast. They grow big. Uh, Django at sixty at five months was already at like five six months was already in that seventy pound range, I believe. Yep, he was in like that sixty seventy pound range and stuff. So as now, um, you see now he's already a hundred around fifteen months or so. He's about a hundred and I know he's for a fact one hundred and thirty. I think he's closer to one forty and he. His parents, his dad was 160 pounds, his mom was 120 pounds. So you got to keep that type of that stuff in account. And then they don't finish, males don't finish 
filling out to three. I've seen some of them finish out at five. But uh, he'll keep growing up for a little bit more, uh, maybe till he's about two or so. And then grow plates are closed. Then he'll just beef up a little bit more. So if he's on the other hand, he's a done deal. Um, she's by no means, she's not a small dog either. She, every Shango just makes every dog look small. <laughs> Aziz is about typically about a 90 in that 90 pound range as a female uh, may touch 100 here and there but other than that they're pretty good they're pretty solid Aziz is Italian pedigree and I'm going solely on the pedigree not the look of the dog I'm really going on the pedigree um, so her lineage is Italian dogs his lineage is American dogs so you gotta take your pick pick your poison and then you go from there figure out what your style dog is uh, like I tell you, it's a precaution, it's a cocktail. Um, just figure out which cocktail looks better for you, <laughs> which papers you want, and then you go from there. Um, but other than that, Shango, come. Come on, man. Other than that, he has to off the K9 services. Me, Shango, and Aziza. Hey, man, come on, man. You see that nut? See, you got to worry about stuff like that. Oh, yeah, another thing is... Corsos, when they're running around, they like to run around and play, watch your knees. Keep your knees bent because they will bump your knees and knock you over. It's the end of the K9 Services. We are out.